back to The Daily Poem. I'm David Kern. Before I share with you today's poem, I want to say a quick word of thanks because I have gotten a lot of emails and notes and Facebook uh, comments and Twitter messages and um, all that sort of thing uh, congratulating my wife and I on, on our baby. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has been offering up uh, words of congratulations and prayers for us. We are very grateful. Uh, Lydia is happy and healthy, and we are, um, of course, grateful for that as well. Also, I want to say thank you to my dad, Andrew, for uh, holding down the fort for me last week before Thanksgiving. He read uh, a series of World War I poems. Uh, World War I has been something of an obsession of his uh, as he's been thinking about the centennial of the war. And so he wanted to share a couple of poems, and it seemed like the right time to do that while I was out with the baby and as we were gearing up for Thanksgiving. But I'm back, and I've got a full slate of poems for you this week, and I'm excited to bring them to you. One of my uh, goals is to read some really great contemporary poetry to you. There are a lot of great contemporary poets out there. There are, of course, the classics, and I'm going to keep reading the classics. But I also want to share some of the great poems by poets who are working right now, who are putting pen to paper and and, uh, producing some really wonderful poems. One of those poets that I am particularly fond of, he has been somewhat of a recent discovery, but I have been uh, thoroughly enjoying his work, and he has a new collection out called The Hanging God. This is James Matthew Wilson. And there's a poem in this collection called The Scar of Odysseus that I want to read to you today. This is it, The Scar of Odysseus by James Matthew Wilson. In the old stories, on a quest for a lost grail, gold fleece, or to refound a kingdom sacked that the hearth gods may rest, A small crew leaves its natal ground and sails beyond the limits of the west. The sons and wives who stayed behind would wonder at their wandering and wait with thoughts of monsters weighing on their mind until a ship with magical freight appears at dawn, its white sail on dark brine. Such tales can hardly fail to please, for we lap up the unknown that's made known and since our lives in great or small degrees look like quests too, could they be shown in all their menaces and victories? No wonder that we celebrate the bliss of bride and groom at their beginning, the perilous hours that thread a narrow strait, but somehow keep the fate spools spinning, the disembarking for a golden estate. What's more, we see a dark plot swells along the path the schoolboy walks alone, and hear behind the girl's first kiss church bells, and feel our hearts with his atone when the bond clerk comes clean on what he sells. Their lives show ours when we behold some soldier stiffly called away to war, or hear monks pray their office in the cold chapel, we know that their forms are those our lives take when their true depths are told. But they must not be. We have seen the maniac proclaim his destiny, and suffered through dull cruise slides, seen on scene as some fool reeled in vanity. We cannot always say what our lives mean. Not just the humble, but the wise accept the distant idol for its strangeness, which gives to our lives plots their just disguise. Odysseus wore a beggar's plainness, so that the truth his love alone did surmise. It's a wonderful poem to read aloud. It pushes you, it challenges you to really enunciate, to really carefully physically manifest each sound. I found myself having to really over-exaggerate the use of my lips and the way that I was, the way that I was speaking and be really careful with it. And you won't notice it in the recording, but I, there's a lot of, um, <laughs> there's a lot of stopping and starting that I had to do and restarting. And I love the way that it, in that way, the way the sounds work together, um, the way the, the physical sensory expression of the words and the way the, the way that they are formed on your lips and the way they sound, that, that puzzle that that all puts together, there's, there's mystery behind that just as there's mystery in the way that these characters that he's referring to uh, give expression and, and mystery to our own lives. So I love that about this poem. This is one of those poems that uh, I think you could think about for a long time and will be a really interesting one to read with students, I think, uh, when reading Odysseus at the same time, or maybe afterwards. Um, there are lots of great poems about Odysseus. Sometimes I should do a whole week just on poems about Odysseus, and this is one that I think belongs, belongs up there. So one more time, The Scar of Odysseus by James Matthew Wilson from The Hanging God. In the old stories, on a quest for a lost grail, gold fleece, or to refound a kingdom sacked that the hearth gods may rest, a small crew leaves its natal ground and sails beyond the limits of the west. The sons and wives who stayed behind would wonder at their wandering and wait with thoughts of monsters weighing on their mind until a ship with magical freight appears at dawn, its white sail on dark brine. 
Such tales can hardly fail to please. For we lap up the unknown that's made known, and since our lives, in great or small degrees, look like quests too, could they be shown in all their menaces and victories? No wonder then we celebrate the bliss of bride and groom at their beginning, the perilous hours that thread a narrow strait, but somehow keep the fate's spool spinning, the disembarking for a golden estate. What's more, we see a dark plot swells along the path the schoolboy walks alone, and hear behind the girl's first kiss church bells, and feel our hearts with his atone when the bond clerk comes clean on what he sells. Their lives show ours. When we behold some soldier stiffly called away to war, or hear monks pray their office in the cold chapel, we know that their forms are those our lives take when their true depths are told. But they must not be. We have seen the maniac proclaim his destiny, and suffered through dull crews slides scene on scene as some fool reeled in vanity. We cannot always say what our lives mean. Not just the humble, but the wise, accept the distant idol for its strangeness, which gives to our lives' plots their just disguise. Odysseus wore a beggar's plainness, so that the truth his love alone had surmise. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one. <laughs>